Hello everybody, this is All House Gaming and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play the Banner Saga 2. In the previous episode, we learned the truth of what was inside the cart that Juno was having us haul around. Not gonna spoil it here. Go watch the episode if you want to know. And now we are fleeing from the dredge into the mines. And where we left off, uh, Zephyr was trying to convince us to go back for Gudmunder. Now, let's see. For these options, quit trying to scare me, go fight or keep moving, Gunmunder dies. We'll do it, but we'll talk Christ later, that'll get us a battle, which I'm not going to say no to that. Yes, we will. We need to talk about many things. You turn and shout, Ravens, back to the top! Heading up the mine shaft is like swimming against a current. Frightened villagers push forward and you barely have room to get past the ox and cart. Gudmunder, in his grim manner, looks pleased to see you. No real plan, he says. Just kill as many as you can. The ravens around you smile at his words and begin to chant. Alright, another survival fight. Now, what do we got with this Gudmunder? Obviously, he's one below. Let's see, stone wall and shield walls. Okay, so he's kind of like, uh... Uh... He's kind of like Eggle in that regard. Not bad on stats. Uh, what can I give him? Not much, actually. Like, really, nothing at all. If he was on level higher, I could give him the Ash Mead, but that ain't happening. And I can't promote him. Alright. Bulwark's going in. Uh, oh, we also get Zephyr. Runic Gale, the Mender creates a magically infused zone within which concentrated areas of power form. Anyone, friend or foe, who steps through one of these concentrations receives a burst of power for one turn. Possible buffs include plus three willpower, plus three strength damage, plus three armor, or plus three break damage. Okay. So she's a supporter. And, as always, she's got the Mend ability. So, she's definitely something we're, somebody we're going to be keeping towards the back. Also got to get her willpower up as much as possible. I think we're going to have her more towards the front so she can act first and get those buff zones off. Nichols, what do you got? Mend, and that's it. Fair enough. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a duplicate of that box that I have on Avend. But I suppose the Ash Mead will have to do in terms of restoring her, uh... Her, uh, willpower. Let's see, Ollie, he's our only ranged unit. Because apparently Spar's bow is purely for decoration. And... Let's get Mogan up here, and, oh yeah, I forgot, we had Bach. Who to have towards the back? You know what? Hmm. Seeing as how we've seen the true power of Tempest, let's bring in Sigbjorn. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot in terms of items to give to everybody. I can give the five ring thing to Sigbjorn, because Krumer's not in this fight. But beyond that, not much else I can give. Oh wait, Zephyr's already- oh wait, no. My mistake, I gave her that. Alright. Uh, Don Strength, Crit Chance, Divert Armor. Eh. Let's do this. What is that gloomy thing standing watch over those stone singers? 
Ah, Gloom Warden. When a Stone Singer is hit, all Gloom Wardens focus on its attacker for a round. Yeah, gotta have to be careful about that because we actually have a Stone Singer this time around. Anyways, let's move Zephyr towards the back. Gunmunder towards the front. Hold up, move him here. Let's move over here to intercept the big guy. 12 and 11, let's see. 11 at 5, I wouldn't be able to kill it outright. So I'm guessing our best bet is probably to try and take out the Gloom Warden ASAP. Before we try going after those Stone Singers. <laughs> Problem is, the only one who could probably go after the Gloom Warden without attacking the Stone Singers would probably be Ollie, and I don't val- er, not value. I don't see his chances of really taking the big guy out. Because he's the only one with a range at attacking the entire party. Well then. Okay, who goes next? The Gloom Warden. I might be able to lure him in if I use, uh, Gudmunder as bait. There we go. Let's try taking him out. The only problem I have is these guys and their damned infection. Right, let's try out this runic gale. Let's see, all he goes next, let's place it here. Increases willpower, increases willpower, increases armor. What's it doing? It's either doing Rupture, Wounded Allies Explode, or Stone Singer lowers allies' armor but sharply raises strength. And I'm not sure which. Nice. Okay, now that he's down, we can focus the stone singers. Unfortunately, nobody can reach them, or at the very least, Mogan can't. Now, let's go over here. Why did I stop there? I should have kept going. Yeah, well. Alright, just do some strength damage, get him below our armor thresholds. I think Ollie's in a good position that he's not going to get hit by Bulwark's extra damage. But we'll find out. Alright, we need to take care of this stone slinger. Before it becomes too much of a problem with all those bombs of his. Yep. You know, this guy's the bigger threat. Let's break the armor. And get some strength damage on it. Yep, powered him up. Surprises there. Uh, who could use some mending on their armor? Not really anyone. 
Let's try that runic gale again, but I think I'm just gonna go for two runes. Bingo! Increase attack, increase armor break. And then go over here. Bingo! Damn. Okay, I can see how Zephyr's gonna be an invaluable ally to us. Alright, just take him out. Can I do Tempest without... No, I can't. Alright, well, take out this stone... Well... No, take out the big guy. Everybody's poisoned. Oh, why not? Get a kill with Zephyr. At least then she can get a promotion. Don't need to use that much. Oh, joy. Three big guys, and pretty much everybody's diseased. Fall... Oh, it's over. Fall back, we're closing the mine. Okay, good. Because I don't think we would have lasted against them. Well, not with everybody poisoned by the stone singers. Ball back, Gundmunder repeats. The opening is ready to come down. As everyone sprints into the mine, the guard ha uh, captain tosses you a heavy hammer and points at the timber. You deserve the <clears throat> excuse me. You deserve the honor, he says. You turn and look at the gray sky, the snow. Bindal, and the dredge walking toward you. The hefty swing, the timber snaps, and the rocks begin to fall. You drop the hammer and race down the shaft towards the light of the torches. Ahead, the path comes to a dead end against the smooth surface of a large flat rock. We should camp, Zephyr says. It may be the last decent sleep these people get for days. I'll need Nichols to assist me in opening the path beyond, but first, you and I should talk. Hmm. Figures, if I'd held out a little longer, I could have actually gone ahead and done the editing for their... ...kills, but it doesn't really matter. Also, I... Is this the first time we're seeing the... ...Raven's Camp? <laughs> Good that they didn't just reuse the, uh, old camp. A few small fires provide a sense of calm for the caravan, though the villagers keep well away from the ravens. There is enough light to see you are no longer in a man-made mine, but a natural cave of sorts. What are we doing down here? Staying alive and keeping Belwar from the dredge? I thought that was obvious. But we keep heading down like we're hunting dwarves. The Valka gives you a ghost of a smile. Until today, no one but a few on the council knew about these tunnels. Not even Menders. We didn't create them, but we have used them a great deal over the years to travel far distances quickly. Zephyr becomes quiet, awaiting a question. Okay. So where are we headed is progress? Uh, gonna want to ask the other two questions first before we ask that one. Where did they lead? Practically everywhere. Arborang, Vo, Grofheim, 
or what is left of it. I'm not sure anyone knows the full extent of these underground paths, but we are about to enter a corridor, one of the main tunnels. Zephyr becomes quiet, awaiting a question. Why keep them a secret? Because the more you know of this world, the more frightening it can be. If children knew how many spiders were in their house, they'd never sleep. And it never hurts to have a way to outmaneuver your enemies. The Valka does not respond. Zephyr becomes quiet, awaiting a question. So, where are we headed? Where would you go, knowing you possess the sleeping body of the immortal Sunder General? See, all options are the same result, but option one gives extra dialogue. Dropping it in the Blue River still sounds good. It was not a terrible plan by, we'll call her Juno for simplicity. But the closest I could get us is a path to the middle of the Falda... Falda Valor Plains. I have to assume the Dredge Army is there in force. Manahar is the safest place to secure Bellower's body. Whatever drew the Dredge toward us in Bindal, the Council can find a way to stop it. And what about my ravens? So far, helping Valka plays less than a, uh, pays less than a bloodshed coin. And that is why I am talking to you alone now. The corridor will lead us to Manahar in a week's time. See us there safely, and I give you a genuine Valka oath. You will be rewarded, well enough to never need work again. You look around at the cave walls and back the way you came. We'll go to Manahar. We were heading there after the Blue River anyway. Alright. Don't need to rest. Nothing else to it. Let's get out of here. Although I suppose I probably could have promoted some people, but that can wait until the next fight. Whenever that is. Anyways, got a couple random events coming up. Ah, perfect. They're all ready. In the light of torches, everyone is covered in soot and dirt. They smell bad, too. Comes as no surprise when the sound of running water excites the caravan. It has to be some underground river or something, a woman says, and all of the villagers start moving in that direction. Let's see... Everyone stops, scouts will check it out, costs you 8 clansmen and 10 morale. Bush ahead of everyone costs you 4 clansmen and 10 morale. Stand back and see what they find, costs 8 pe uh, clansmen and 10 morale. I'll kill anyone who leaves the past, costs 5 morale. Which is the least worst of all the options. I'll kill anyone who leaves the path. Your calm tone has more of an effect on the clansmen than any of your roaring. They stop and get back to moving ahead, though some look perturbed. Um, hello. The man's sudden appearance makes you tense. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. It's something I do. I mean, something I've learned to do. Something that will get you killed if you do it to me again. Under... Okay, yes. Understood. But it does have its uses. It just allow me to fight alongside you in a... Well, a fight. You won't regret it. You scoff and turn away from the man, only to see Gudmunder approach. I see you met Deitch. Strange fellow to have next to you in a fight, but he finds his way through enemy defenses. Then you fight next to him. People near me tend to get hurt, but his injuries won't be an accident. Okay, I guess we got a new party member. Okay... Ah. The scout rushes back to the caravan. There's gold down here. You feel the surge of excitement like everyone else. Vein as thick as my leg, just over, well, just around. That man looks left and right, confused. Damn it, I'm all turned around. Okay. Another bad one. Yay. Idiot, you're on Yox duty, costs you five morale. Send out a search party, gets, uh, costs you half a day and five morale. And gold does us no good right now anyway, costs you three peasants. Threaten him, gets you half a day, costs you six clansmen, two fighters, but gets to renown. Okay. Can't afford to scoff at renown. You grab the man by his tunic and lift him against the low cave ceiling. Start remembering or I'll stick you up here permanently. The man's eyes are wide. I remember, he says. Follow me. A few hours pass while following the scout. Some with you take wrong turns and go missing, and one man falls into a ravine. You misled us, you say, backing the man into the other ravens. 
He whimpers an apology before fists, clubs, and finally swords take his life. Okay, I think that's the rest for now. Yep. Let's see. Though torches highlight the craggy black rocks and puddles on the path underfoot, they do little to keep everyone together. Sharp turns around boulders quickly block lines of sight. We've lost a few families, Zephyr informs you. We need to stop and find them. You consider your options. Well, let's see. We need No, we need to keep moving gets you nothing. You find them. Gets you three quarters of a day and 28 clansmen. This is the only time gets progress. I appreciate the help, she says, and splits everyone into search groups. As you search, you realize it's just as hard to track time down here as it is above with the sun that never moves. Sometime later, you think you hear voices to the left. Call out to the left returns you to the same options. <clears throat> search to the left plus return to camp gets you a quarter of a day and 38 clansmen. Keep moving along the path slash keep searching down the path uh, gets you 44 peasants. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna shout. We're over here! Your voice booms around the cave and echoes back to you several times. Quiet, Zephyr says. Just because the Valka kept these tunnels a secret doesn't mean... Too late, Ollie shouts. He spins and throws an axe into the deep head of a skulker. Many more crawl from the shadows swarming the caravan. And I think I'm going to skip, uh, stick with the same party. Although, let's get a promotion going for Gudmunder. Uh, you know, I don't think we really need to max out break. Even though it would mean what we wouldn't have to spend, uh... Have to spend any willpower on uh, things like on uh, things like break, and I think the ring will go better for Gutmunder because he's meant to be the tank. All right, let's go. A couple of those skulkers are alarmingly large and vile. Okay. You gonna let me get a good look at them, or what? No? Oh, god damn it, not this glitch again. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Okay, vile skulkers, the big fellas. Let's see, chase, skulker can move through allies, skulk, skulker becomes invisible and stalks a target, howl. Skulker reappears and attacks, signaling its packmates to attack the same target. It looks basically the same as a regular Skulker, just bigger and better stats. Okay, then. Well... Oops. Let's move the humans all to one tile. Get them out of the way. I think... Ah, but Sigbjorn moves last. I don't want to be able to get Sigbjorn and Bulwark into the thick of things. And I think we'll leave the humans up there grouped up. Gunmunder can protect them. Ollie can hit from a distance. And do a decent amount of damage to them, all things considered. Hell, it could take out the little ones in one strike. The big ones I'm worried about. Mogan can take care of any that get close, and Zephyr can generate boosts. Now, let's see, who's next? This one will most likely try and go for Zephyr. Unfortunately, there ain't much I can do about that. Zephyr or Ollie. Uh, 
Yeah, no surprise there. Oof. Alright, break its armor. Deal some damage. I mean, they did the smart thing going after the Volca. Because she is the big threat here, to them at least. <sighs> Great. Let's try and get some runic gale around here. Not what I was hoping for. And it goes invisible. Alright, let's take this big guy out. Yep. That is unfortunate. Now, these things can't attack diagonally, so I think I'm safe to go in with a bloody flail from Mogan. Get some good damage on that. Oh no, but this one's going after. Yep. Go in here, hit him with a tempest, and take both of them out. Hopefully. You know what? I'm just gonna leave Gunmunder here. Yeah, but this one can't actually reach her. Which one goes next? This one? Yeah, I'm gonna leave Gunmunder here. Just stonewall it, even though I don't think it's strictly necessary. Just gonna surround and protect Zephyr. This thing's turning invisible and will most likely attack her. Hey. Let's try this runic gale again and place it here. Let's see. Plus three willpower, and I don't see the other. Really? Okay, that aggro doing its job. And what are the odds of all three of those getting a deflect and a dodge? Well, he can't get to those two, but I'm pretty sure Bulver can take him out. Nothing he can do. Alright, call the weak. And because I used call the weak, I get to move before this thing. Okay, other than the start with that vile, uh, with those vile ones nearly killing Zephyr. Did all right. Landsman Forge, we got 24 supplies. Now, I should note, battle is one of the good options. The other one is also, you know, getting those clansmen back. Water barrels are running low, Holfi. Your quartermaster reports, and I'll be damned if I start licking these slimy rocks for a drink. The shield maiden looks at you. These people start getting desperate for water down here. You cut her off. I know. Send out some scouts. We'll camp here until they return. Some of your ravens and other members of the caravan group up and grab torches, rope, and water skins before heading off in different directions. 
Better catch some rest while you can, Fulka says. Nothing to do until they get back anyway. Laying down, you focus on the sound of a small drip somewhere in the cave. It grows louder, like the beat of a drum, like thousands of feet marching behind you. You turn and everyone stops. You see the glowing eyes of your army looking at you in admiration. A hundred members break formation and dig holes in the cavern floors and place stone bowls in the depressions. Bowls quickly fill with water and the first is offered to you. You slake your thirst before seeing your red armored reflection in the bowl. You wake up with a shout and Fulka joins you. What was it this time? She asks, concerned. Let's see, I dreamt I was asunder. Costs you three clansmen and three fighters. Say nothing, the same thing. Instruct her on finding water. Gets you 15 morale and 5 renown. Dig holes, you say. Put bowls down in them. See if they fill with water. She sets some ravens to follow your strange commands, and shortly after you hear the whooping cheers of success. The celebration brings all the scouts back early. And now with that, I'm going to make camp. I'm going to end this episode off here for today because we are out of time and it looks like we got some conversations to take on. But, yeah. Uh, going to have to end it off there. I'm not going to be uh, taking care of the editing right now because, like I said, I tried to do that between recording sessions so I don't break my flow of work. But yeah, if you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for an upload, or to hit the straw link to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.